Hey everybody, I'm getting ready for my run today. I should first tell you that I'm actually not a runner, but I do know at least some of the biomechanics um, behind it and things to do to share with you on how to help prevent injury and make sure you stay well hydrated during your run. Um, so first it starts with the foundation. You guys know I love my Brooks. So I've got a, a couple here to choose from. Um, I'm going to be treadmill running this morning, so I think maybe something just like a simple, this is the Ghost 11. Um, of course, I've got my orthotic in here. I suffer from really high arches, so I wear a cork orthotic. Um, I think it's great because it um, is kind of designed to absorb shock. So whenever I'm striking, I'm not getting a lot of impact to like a hard material. A lot of people think orthotics are only hard materials. Actually, you can build them however you want. That's why it's custom. So we need just need to work with you and, you know, customize something that's best for you. So that's my combination. It's a Brooks Ghost 11. Um, I probably got this like two months ago. This will probably last me maybe four months if, because if I'm sticking, this for, um, sticking with this for my running shoe. Again, pretty lightweight, nice cushion in the heel, super comfortable. Um, ideally, you want to be more of a midfoot striker, um, less into like the true heel area. Definitely, I would recommend the podiatrist to stay away from the forefoot because that can just lead to potential injury. Um, that'll be a whole nother series, you know, going over, hey, this is, you know, proper running technique. Um, but ultimately, it starts with the foundation. This is where we're starting today. So, Brooks, number one, let's get these on. Tip number two, hydration. Please make sure you're fully hydrated before you go for a run, especially if you're outside. I personally never go anywhere without my Yeti. I love this thing. I mean, look, this is the only thing I drink out of at home. Um, forget the glass, it's too fancy. So, I always have this by my side when I'm getting ready to run. Also, this is something that's pretty cool someone just gave me as a gift. Um, it's a cooling towel, so you can get this wet and just have it close by and then kind of keep it over if you're starting to get overheated, especially in a hot Kentucky summer. This, I think, will come in very handy. You can probably get this off of Amazon if you can see it there. So it's just a simple, a few simple little tips and tricks to keep you, you know, feeling good when you're out there. And of course, or if you're on the treadmill, try to keep your energy up. All right, that's tip number three. All right, we are now to tip number four. This is probably one of the most important tips outside of, of course, your shoe. Um, it's stretching. You know, I hear from a lot of runners, you know, I stretch afterwards or, you know, honestly, notoriously, they're bad at stretching. And everything that they're doing, obviously, is an explosive movement whenever they're, they're running. So it's really important to get your muscles warmed up with a good solid, maybe about 10 minutes of stretching beforehand. We actually have a resource uh, link on our website. Um, if you go to www.lexingtonkypodiatry.com, uh, go under the resource tab and there's an area that says hips. Um, hips, the hip area is really great to stretch that whole girdle out, which is important for runners, not only to do like a simple little leg stretch, but we wanna look at the entire um, leg is what we consider an open kinetic chain, meaning it's all connected, it's all working together. The way that these muscles and tendons originate and insert in different areas of the lower leg can really affect your stride length and how well you're performing as a runner. So I always stretch before and actually after. A classic running stretch um, is super simple. Uh, we'll go into that on another video, all the types of stretches you know that you can do. But a good tutorial is just to go to our website and then you can check those out and get started that way. So again, about 10 minutes um, before and then maybe five minutes after. You know, you've really worked those muscles, so give them a little TLC, they deserve it. Um, so moving forward, my next little trick, I guess that's number five. Um, I personally, I don't like to run. I run because my body likes it and the feeling you get afterwards. So. This is nuts, but I'll throw a piece of gum in because it opens up like my nasal passages at my mouth. It gets really, I don't know, tingly. <laughs> so whatever you can do to psych yourself out, to get you, you know, feeling good, to be able to run as much as you can, as long as you can, hey, I'll do it. 
Another tip for you is make sure you are lifting weights. A lot of runners fail to really focus on weightlifting, but I think that's a huge, you know, additive to your performance as a runner. Um, deadlifts, squats, lunges, you know, calf raises, those are the basics. All of those are really gonna help build muscle mass, which is ultimately gonna help you more with your explosive, you know, running movement. Personally, I think that was the biggest difference for me because um, I didn't run for a long time. I mean, I've never liked running, so I never really did it, but my body likes it, so whatever. Whatever works, I guess. Um, so anyway, once I had done a bunch of weightlifting and then I went back, I was like, okay, let me test this out. And it was actually so much easier for me to run. So good luck to all you runners out there. I know I certainly need it. These are just some basic tips that you can do. If you have any questions or comments um, for me, I need it as a beginning runner, please drop them below. I'm happy to comment and help you in any way I can. Um, again, it always starts from the foundation though. The shoe is probably the most important thing you can do. And then of course, as it leads upward, making sure that your body um, is strong enough and your core is strong enough to withstand that kind of impact. And most importantly, if you feel any type of pain while you're running, that's not normal. You know, something's happening, there's some type of abnormal force or pressure on the foot, so you really need to stop, um, you know, give it a few days and rest. And if it continues to bother you, make sure you give us a call and come in and so we can just make sure that you're not dealing with a slight little stress fracture. You know, the old adage of let's just, you know, run through it or walk through it, that never, that never turns out good. So make sure that you listen to your foot and your body. If something is hurting, stop. It's just temporary. It's just a little hiccup um, in you know, your goals. So don't make the decision not to have anything done affect you long-term, you know, months, even years. Cause you know, I've seen that unfortunately happen a lot. It's, if we had, you know, caught it three months ago, you know, you could have done that triathlon or you could have done that 5K that you've been wanting to do. So the earlier you catch it, the quicker we can get you back on your feet. So good luck, happy running everybody. Um, I'll talk to you all soon. You let me know if you need anything.